December 25th, 1848. My dear sir, I will write to you at more length when my heart can find a little rest. Now I can only thank you very briefly for your letter, which seemed to me eloquent in its sincerity. Emily is nowhere here now. Her wasted mortal remains are taken out of the house. We have laid her cherished head under the church aisle beside my mother's, my two sisters dead long ago, and my poor hapless brothers. But a small remnant of the race is left, so my poor father thinks. Well, the loss is ours, not hers. And some sad comfort I take as I hear the wind blow and feel the cutting keenness of the frost in knowing that the elements bring her no more suffering. Their severity cannot reach her grave. Her fever is quieted, her restlessness soothed, her deep, hollow cough is hushed forever. We do not hear it in the night, nor listen for it in the morning. We have not the conflict of that strangely strong spirit and the fragile frame before us. Relentless conflict, once seen, never to be forgotten. A dreary calm reigns round us, in the midst of which we seek resignation. My father and sister Anne are far from well. As for me, God has hitherto most graciously sustained me. So far, I have felt adequate to bear my own burden and even to offer a little help to others. I am not ill. I can get through daily duties and do something towards keeping hope and energy alive in our mourning household. My father says to me almost hourly, Charlotte, you must bear up. I shall sink if you fail me. These words you can conceive are a stimulus to nature. The sight too of my sister Anne's very still but deep sorrow wakens in me such fear for her that I dare not falter. Somebody must cheer the rest. So I will not now ask why Emily was torn from us in the fullness of our attachment, rooted up in the prime of her own days, in the promise of her powers. Why her existence now lies like a field of green corn trodden down, like a tree in full bearing struck at the root. I only say, sweet is rest after labor and calm after tempest. And repeat again and again and again that Emily knows that now. Yours sincerely, C. Bronte. Thank you all very, very much.